Welcome to the general overview of CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard. This is being provided to you by the Office of Provider Engagement and Regulation, Maryland Department of Health, and the Behavioral Health Resources Technical Assistance Program, the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. The webinar learning objectives are to describe the process of gaining access to the CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard, recognize and apply the basic features of the dashboard, and identify the technical resources available for the dashboard. The Office of Provider Engagement and Regulation, or OPER, sits within the Maryland Department of Health Public Health Services Administration. OPER consists of the Office of PDMP and Applied Data Programs and the Office of Controlled Substances Administration. OPER manages and supports the CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard. Contact OPER staff by emailing mdh.overdosedata at maryland.gov. There has been some confusion about the name of the dashboards. OPER has decided to use the name CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboards. This is separate from the overdose fatality review dashboards that some jurisdictions have access to in support of their local overdose fatality review team and managed by a separate office. We have updated the name from CRISP Opioid Indicator Dashboards because the dashboards have evolved over time and include more than opioid specific metrics. We are working to brand these dashboards with a consistent name and you may see updates as the dashboard itself and supporting materials. The CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard consists of multiple dashboards including Prescription Drug Monitoring Program PDMP Dashboard which displays information on scheduled 2 through 5 controlled dangerous substances dispensed prescriptions in or into Maryland and reported to the PDMP. Overdose Related Hospital Encounters Dashboard which displays information on acute drug and alcohol intoxication related hospital encounters in Maryland acute care hospitals and reported to Health Services Cost Review Commission. Overdose Fatality Dashboard which displays information on fatal drug and alcohol related intoxication deaths occurring in Maryland and ruled as accidents or deaths of undetermined nature by the Maryland Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. New users must complete the following steps to gain access to the CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard. Contact OPER with a request to gain access, include a justification for use of data to mdh.overdosedata at maryland.gov. OPER will review and if approved, follow up with the user agreement for the user to sign. Users should submit agreement back to OPER through mdh.overdosedata at maryland.gov. OPER will acknowledge receipt to the user. CRISP will send an email to the user activating the user's account. Please update OPER if credentialed staff leave their position and new staff are hired or replaced so the account can be deactivated and a new account, account created. The CRISP Drug Related Indicators Dashboard includes both counts and rates. A count is a frequency of a particular incident or condition. Counts are useful in providing context to a problem and when the population of interest is difficult to define. An example of a count would be 265 1,443 people from Maryland received a stimulant prescription in 2018. A rate standardizes frequency to a common time period in population. Rates are useful trying to compare frequencies of diseases. Rates are useful when needed to be specific in defining your time period and population. In CRISP drug related indicator dashboards, populations are the entirety of the zip code or jurisdiction. An example of a rate would be for every 1,000 Marylanders, 284 stimulant prescriptions were dispensed in 2018. 
Both counts and rates are available in the dashboard, so choose wisely. We are now going to enter the PDMP dashboard and take a tour of the basic features that you can find in all the dashboards. To learn how to use data in each dashboard, please view their specific demonstration video. Open the screen with just the log in page. To access the CRIS Drug Related Indicators dashboard after going through the credentialing process, users will log on using the following screen. The login page link is reports.crisphealth.org. Users may wish to bookmark the login page since the URL does not indicate the CRISP Drug Related Indicators dashboard, and depending on your role, you may use multiple CRISP log on pages. To log on, enter your email address you provided to CRISP and OPER. Then users will enter the password you sent when CRISP sent you an activation email. Users have five opportunities to enter password correctly. If you do not enter a correct password, you will receive a pop-up box and the login page will indicate how many login attempts you have left. As you see here, I have four login attempts remaining. Currently, if you do not log in every 90 days, your account will be inactive and you will have to contact OPER to reactivate your account. OPER is working with CRISP to update this feature to allow for a longer period before an account is considered inactive. If you forget your password, you may select the Reset Your Password option below the Login button. You have the opportunity for a link to be sent to your box to reset your password. I remember my password today, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Oftentimes there is a delay in opening the dashboards or updating the indicators. This is due to the Tableau technology that is used to create the dashboards. OPER continues to work with CRISP to improve the dashboards, including the time that it takes to lo load the pages. In the past, we have found that Chrome is one of the best browsers to use to decrease the login time. The main screen includes a box that says drug-related indicators under your dashboard. Depending on your role with CRISP, you may have additional boxes here. If you hover over the blue box, it will turn green and you can view a snapshot of the dashboard. Once you select the box, the dashboard you have access to will display. You should see the PDMP dashboards, overdose hospital events dashboards, and the overdose fatality dashboard. To select a dashboard, you hit the Tableau display on the right it lets you open the PDMP dashboard. Let's open the PDMP dashboard. A new tab will appear in your internet browser with the dashboard. Once the dashboard loads, you will see a few basic features that are consistent across the dashboards. All dashboards include the red text at the top. This is a reminder that all data is considered preliminary. Data redisclosures should only occur as permitted by the end user agreement and users should not share login information. The basic layout for each dashboard includes a title, including a high-level summary of data you are viewing, indicators on the right that you can change, most dashboards include a map, additional data displays below including time graphs, bar graphs, and pie charts, and tooltips on the data displays. 
To go back to the dashboard options, you can either select the report bar on the left hand side of your screen. And your current tab in your internet browser will change to the new dashboard. Or you can select the Chris button at the top of your screen, which will take you to the main screen. Every dashboard has tabs on the top. Future webinars will go into ad additional depth regarding the data available in each tab. As you see, the PDMP dashboard has three tabs for data and a notes tab. Every dashboard has a notes tab. By selecting the notes tab, you can view notes for each dashboard which provides condensed information from the manual, key points, and quick reference. The notes tab is periodically updated. We recommend every so often you review the notes tab. We will now select the PDMP by prescriber tab. The dashboards include helpful features to help you navigate the data. Let's start with the three buttons at the top, the refresh, revert, pause, or resume buttons. The refresh button is helpful if you are about to time out. The CRISP drug related indicators dashboard will time out after 15 minutes of inactivity. The refresh button is also helpful if a data updates occur while you are reviewing the dashboard. You can select the refresh button to view the most updated data. Data is updated every one to three business days. If you scroll down to the bottom of the dashboard, you will see text describing the data. This text indicates when the dashboard was last updated with data. You can see here the PDMP dashboard was last updated on November 25th of 2019. You can also see the last day that the data was updated by checking the time period and end date. I've been in the dashboard for a few minutes, but I have not selected any indicators. Let's hit refresh. The revert button resets the indicators to the original settings, while the refresh does not impact the indicators. The last button is the pause or resume button. This allows the user to change the indicators without having to wait for the dashboard to load after each change. I will demonstrate these buttons as I review the indicators. One way to change the data display on the data visualizations and maps is to change the indicators on the right. Most features of the indicators are the same on each dashboard. The metrics are different, but how to change the metrics are similar. If I wanted to change the time frame for the data displayed, I can either type a new date or select a date on the calendar. Before I change the time, I will select the pause button. The pause button is incredibly helpful to save time as you go through the dashboards. To indicate a time frame I'm interested in reviewing, I will enter the start date, let's say January 1, 2018. So I will type 1-1-2018 and hit enter. Then I will select an end date, let's select December 31st, 2018, by selecting the date on the calendar. So I will scroll through the months until I get to December and then click 31. Because I selected the pause button, I have updated the indicators, but the data in the display has not changed. You can see the data is dimmed. Once I hit resume, the data in the visuals will update. Now the data has been updated and I can view data for 2018. Let's say I'm only interested in stimulants dispense. I will hit the pause button again. I will select therapeutic classes by hitting the down arrow in the drop down window. Currently all controlled dangerous substances are displayed. To select a specific drug, I will deselect all 
and select stimulants and hit apply or press enter on my keyboard. I can close the drop down window by selecting the down arrow again. To see all therapeutic classes again, I can either open the drop down option again and hit all or I can hover over the options above the drop down box until I see a funnel. If I hit the funnel, all options are displayed again. This saves a few clicks. And the drop down box will display all. The indicators along the side impact all visualizations. You can change the indicators by changing the displays. Let's hit resume. If I just want to view stimulants on the first time graph, I can hover next to the therapeutic class and select the pen, then select stimulants. This will dull all other therapeutic classes on the time graph and the stimulants will be prominent and the number will be highlighted. While the lines are dull, I can still hover over the lines to view a tool tip. It is hard to see the difference between stimulants and benzodiazepines, and I only want to display stimulants on this time graph, so I would prefer all other therapeutic classes were removed, not just dulled. I can select the pen again so all therapeutic classes are displayed. Then I can hit the drop down box in the above therapeutic class indicator to deselect all and select stimulants. Don't forget to hit apply. Now I just see stimulants on the time graph. Let's say the state started a public service announcement about stimulant prescribing, but the project only lasted the last six months of the year. I'll go up and change the time range. The time graph will now show dispenses per month, but if I want additional data, I can hover next to the bottom left portion of the table and I see plus and a minus. If I select the plus, additional data points will generate on the time graph. Before the line showed a point per month, now I see a point per week. I can even go down to the day. If I cross check this with a calendar, I can see that each low point is a weekend date, so people are less likely to get their prescriptions filled on a Saturday or Sunday. Let's go back to the original settings by hitting revert. This may take a few minutes. I see the time ranges back and all the data is displayed. Let's say I'm interested in a specific county or region of the state. I can hover over the specific jurisdiction I'm interested in viewing to see a tooltip with summary data. Or I can select a jurisdiction on the map to update the data visuals below. Now the visuals below are specific to a jurisdiction. If I'm interested in a region of the state, not just one jurisdiction, I can select multiple counties. To do this, I will go to the map and select several jurisdictions at once by clicking and dragging a box over the map. Now the visuals below only show data for the selected counties. If I am interested in a non-contiguous group of jurisdictions, I can add jurisdictions by holding the control key on my keyboard and add a jurisdiction. Or I can select the jurisdictions by going to the indicator and picking from the list. I do need to scroll down to see all jurisdictions. Uncheck All, then select Worcester, Wacomico, Washington, and St. Mary's from the drop-down menu and hit Apply. 
So far, I've been viewing the number of individuals receiving drugs account. If I'm interested in viewing a rate, I can select from the prescribing measures a rate such as prescription fills per 1,000. Now you can see the visual displays rates, not counts. It is important to note that rates are always metric per population. So for the PDMP, you see prescription fills per 1,000. That is 1,000 people, not prescriptions. This is based on the 2015 census data. Say you are interested in taking a deeper look at the numbers. You can download an Excel file by selecting the Excel option at the top. The Excel file will download data based on the indicators you have selected. So you can see the rate numbers in column C. So you have found the data you are looking to include in a grant application or report and you would like to share the visuals in the dashboard. You can select the print button which opens a download PDF pop-up. In this box you can indicate which visuals you would like to download and in what formatting. The last aspect of the dashboards I would like to share are the bulletin board and feedback options. These buttons are CRISP Reporting Services resources. OPER does not include information here. For dashboard questions, please email the MDH email address, not the CRS resource. If you have any questions regarding the use of the dashboards, email OPER at mdh.overdosedata at maryland.gov. A user manual is available and will be updated periodically. Before publishing reports, please refer to your end user agreement. All data should be considered preliminary. If you publish a report, please cite appropriately and include the name of the data source, time period of the query, mention the dashboard, CRISP drug related indicators dashboards. Thank you.